earthquake hit earlier today. It was the second major quake in just two weeks. The death toll is rising to nearly 40 people and another 1,000 are believed to have been hurt. And you can see the lawmakers running from the legislative buildings there in fear of losing their lives. Authorities have told people to get out in the open and away from buildings that could crumble on top of them. The massive quake toppling buildings and roads there. More than 8,000 people were killed when a 7.9 magnitude quake hit just weeks ago. And back here at home, a real commuter nightmare caught on live television, a Bolt bus. What? Look at that right there, packed with passengers. It explodes on a Massachusetts highway. It was en route from New York to Boston when the driver noticed smoke and was able to get out all 46 passengers out off that bus safely. The cause of that explosion is still unknown, but we're told that everybody is okay. The NFL taking the air out of Tom Brady, the league suspending the Patriots quarterback for four games for the Deflategate scandal. In addition to Brady's suspension, the team slapped with a $1 million fine and the loss of two draft picks and two equipment managers involved in deflating those balls will also be suspended. Fellow quarterback Eli Manning saying he understands the punishment. Tom's um, been a friend of mine. I don't, I don't like to see anybody get suspended. I don't like to see anybody get in trouble. I think it is uh, about integrity, and you have to follow the rules. And so if someone's, someone's breaking rules, uh, I understand you know, you, you, you're, you're going to get punished for it. Well, in the meantime, others are blasting the suspension, saying it's too harsh. Donald Trump weighing in on the punishment of the quarterback that he considers a friend, saying they have no definitive proof against Tom Brady or the Patriots. If Hillary doesn't have to produce her emails, why should Tom? Very unfair. Well, Brady's agent says he plans to appeal the leaks ruling. And those are your headlines. We'll see you in just a little bit. I wonder what, uh, thank you very much, Heather. Thanks, Heather. I wonder what Laura Ingram thinks about all this. Before we talk about real stuff, can we talk about this? This is real Laura? stuff. I know, but Laura, I know you're more of a college fan, but what do you think yeah. about this, Tom Brady Payne? Are you jotting it down now? What do you think? Uh, well, first of all, I'm not the expert on politics like you are, Brian, but look, I know people have very strong views on this. He's a phenomenal quarterback. I happen to be a Redskins fan, but if a Redskins quarterback did this, I would say the same thing. If you cheated, I think it matters. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's four games or two games or five. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how they calculate that. Maybe that was unfair. I don't know. But I do think that people who say, well, it doesn't matter. It's just deflating the ball. I mean, it's like scuffing a baseball. And what's the difference? Well, you, you know this, Brian. And a few inches in football can determine, can determine an outcome. We saw that happen during the playoffs, right? Where, or, or in the college, college uh, really important college bowl games. A few inches here or there. It could turn a game. I'm not sure. saying that happened here, but I do think rules matter. They should apply to everybody. Right. Maybe the, the NFL needs to have a consistent uh, response every time something like this happens. Maybe that would reassure people. I don't know. But he did do the same thing, kind of, that Hillary did in a way. He refused <laughs> to turn over the emails. Right. That is the big right? Problem. Why? I don't know. And but I'm not an expert in this. She got away with it so far. He did. Yeah. Where the, where's so, the server, Tom? Does he have his own server? <laughs> they might turn it up later. Who knows? So rules matter. Do words matter, particularly in a college commencement speech? And I'm talking about the one that firstly uh, Michelle Obama actually gave at Tuskegee University. This is what she said, and then we'll react. Road ahead is not going to be easy. It never is, especially for folks like you and me. Because while we've come so far, the truth is that those age-old problems are stubborn. And they haven't fully gone away. We've both felt the sting of those daily slights throughout our entire lives. The folks who crossed the street in fear of their safety. The clerks who kept a close eye on us in all those department stores. The people at formal events who assumed we were the help. And those who have questioned our intelligence, our honesty, even our love of this country. And I know that these little indignities are obviously nothing compared to what folks across the country are dealing with every single day. Those nagging worries that you're going to get stopped or pulled over for absolutely no reason. The fear that your job application will be overlooked because of the way your name sounds. So rate her commencement speech there, Laura. Um, well, uh, it's very uplifting, don't you think? Yeah, <laughs> very positive. Very, Tackle the well, world. It, wouldn't it have been interesting if Michelle campaigned 
with that tone and demeanor, demeanor and mm -hmm. substance in 2008 uh, or 2012. Uh, will the real Michelle please stand up? I went back and I looked at her old thesis from Princeton. A lot of common themes from what she said at Tuskegee to what she wrote about uh, as a Princeton undergrad. Uh, as a Princeton undergrad, she bemoaned the fact that, that Princeton University, like so many elite universities, cater to their white alumni and their white student body, both socially and academically. She bemoaned the fact that Afro-American Studies Department at Princeton was so small and that there weren't enough uh, African-American professors. She talked about black culture versus white culture. Uh, it, a lot of she, she felt like a, almost a stranger at Princeton, mm -hmm. even though she was an undergrad. There was a lot of, a lot of writing that's about the di division on campus. A lot of similar strains, yeah. and yet, yet that's not the way she obviously campaigned for her president, so that's interesting. Another interesting thing is Tuskegee University was in part founded by Booker T. Washington. And Booker T. Washington, one of my favorite uh, historical figures, uh, one of his most famous quotes is, character, not circumstances, make the man. And he warned about associating with people of bad character, uh, associate with people of good character, not bad character, because mm -hmm. that, that could uh, have a huge effect on your life. Now that is a message of empowerment to sure. people, that you're going to be, you're sure you're going to suffer indignities. Absolutely. Uh, but you can overcome them. So. It was, a, it was an odd speech, I thought, for someone who has spent the last, you know, seven or eight years trying to show everybody the positive, you know, uplifting, hopeful right. side of, of her and her husband's um, uh, uh, presidency. So I think it's deflecting a lot of what's happening now uh, on the streets in Baltimore. Right. I mean, seven years hasn't really helped the black community, right? I mean, he has been president for the last seven years, so you right. go back to the well of division. That's what Michelle knows really well. I think this is the real Michelle Obama, and I'm glad she's uh, showing us now. I wish you showed us in 2008. Okay, uh, we're going to play a clip for you. Is this the real Mark Halperin? He's uh, a political anchor or reporter over at Bloomberg now, and he conducted what has been regarded as, uh, described as the most racist interview of the 2016 uh -huh. cycle, where he tries to, uh, it looks like a gotcha thing with Ted Cruz. We're going to play some of it and get your reaction after this. Watch this. When you filled out your application to Princeton, to Harvard Law School, did you list yourself as an Hispanic? Oh, sure. I've listed myself as Cuban-American. That's, that's, that's my heritage and my background. You got a favorite Cuban food, Cuban dish? Oh, I grew up eating Cuban food all the time. What's uh, my your favorite dish? Uh, you know, picadillo. Mr. Finally, I'm going to give you the opportunity to directly welcome your colleague, Senator Sanders, to the race, and I'd like you to do it, if you would, en espanol. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to stick to English, and I, I, but I appreciate the in invitation, senor. Mark Halperin has yeah. since kind of apologized, said he got the tone wrong. What's going on there? Well, what if you had asked that question of an uh, African-American candidate? What black foods do you like? What, uh, you know, it's just, yeah. to me, it, it just seems, it seems so obvious. It's, it, it is part of the gotcha journalism that we should come to expect. It always happens to conservatives, especially someone who's more of a, a uh, I'd say, classic Reagan conservative like Cruz. It doesn't surprise me at all. But we should expect a lot of this. It will also happen to Jeb Bush. You're going to see a lot more questions of Bush uh, that I think they, you know, they're going to try to trip him up. Yeah. So Cruz, I think, handled it about as well as you can. Uh, but I thought we got rid of literacy tests in English. But now we have a literacy test in Spanish. <laughs> right. Okay. Hey, Lori, All right, you know, that's I fine. I, what I love that Ted Cruz said, no reason to apologize. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah, class. I mean, he doesn't speak Spanish well. So what? I think jo Jeb Bush's wife probably doesn't speak <clears throat> English all that well from what I hear. Is that a big deal? No. Nope. Uh, you know, maybe not, maybe, I don't know, but uh, to me, this, it's, it's all very predictable. Halperin's a better journalist than that, I think. I think he does some pretty good work, so, uh, you know, right. look, we all mess up. Maybe that's just uh, yep. a momentary mm -hmm. lapse. Maybe so. All right. Laura, great Laura, thank you. you very much. Go do your Adios. radio show. Adios, amigos. Hasta luego. Later. <laughs> Arrivederci. All right. Uh, meanwhile, they just can't get rid of them. Auto workers in Alabama now voting for a fifth time to ditch the union. <clears throat> so why is big labor demanding another vote? Well, she just joined Fox Business Network. Trish Regan has more on the union roadblock straight ahead. Good morning. Then. Have a cruise to paradise plans? Your vacation may now be canceled. The brand new travel warning coming up. You've got nothing to lose. Won't you let me take you on a sea cruise? Fox News Channel is on Sirius XM. Listen live on channel 114 now.
Well, they voted four times to get rid of their union and won at least three of those elections. So why are employees at an Alabama plant now preparing for a fifth vote? Well, because the UAW claims that those four previous votes were invalid. We now want to welcome brand new host of Fox Business, Trish Regan, Intel, Trish Regan herself, to discuss. Welcome. Thank you so much. What a pleasure really to sit to here with here. you. It's as great to be here with you as well. Really wow. inauguration here over <laughs> yes. at the Fox family. Yes. How fun. You know, this union deal, is this indicative of what's going on and the decline of unions, really the new face? of workers? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these workers have said over and over again, nope. we don't want the UAW here, and yet the UAW keeps coming back and saying, no, but really you do want us here. It really speaks to uh, the power of the National Labor Relations Board uh, and, and the strengthening of that board that the president has put into play. But the reality is most Americans know now they're going to do a better job negotiating for themselves as opposed to the union. There was very much, Elizabeth, a time and place in our history for unions. You go back to the 1800s, you go back to the early 1900s, when workers' conditions were so bad that the union really could make a difference. But we're in a very different society right now. We've gone from an agrarian uh, economy to a manufacturing sure. economy, very much now into a technological and services-based economy, and there's just no need for unions anymore. And when you look at the numbers to back up what you're saying, we've seen a drop of about two million in, in membership there when it comes to unions right now. So that landscape is absolutely changing, and this is just one of the topics, but in the lane of what you're going to be covering on your great show, Trish Regan Intel. Yeah. If you're going to hit on this, and I know you grew up in New Hampshire. I did. And I you, did. Were, you were looking at those license plates saying, live free or die. <laughs> you're going to bring together the best yeah. in politics, yeah. finance, and all, all the great things about this nation on your show to yeah. really yeah. ensure that that's happening. That, that had a big impact on me, uh, that state motto, and I think that there's sort of a sensibility in New Hampshire that whatever government has, government will spend. So you need to keep government on very much a, a short leash. It's one of the reasons why we elect our governor every two years. Um, but we have no state income tax. We have no sales tax. We have very little property tax. And yet somehow we managed to get by. In fact, New Hampshire did better than the rest of the country when it came to weathering the downturn in 08. And I think that was a lot because of the economic policy in place. Okay, so let's go from balancing budgets to balancing the workload, right? So we have a, you got three little ones at home. I have three Tell us wonderful, about them. Great wonderful mom, here. little ones. Uh, three just like you okay. as well. Um, so you know how hectic it is. We've got a very busy life. I have a wonderful husband. And we have three terrific kids together. Elizabeth and Alexander are my twins. Uh, and we have a little boy. The twins are five years old. And we have a little boy named Jamie who is two years old. And uh, they are just, they're everything. But, you know, they're a big part of also why I care so passionately about all of these issues, as I'm sure you do right now. I mean, yeah, growing up as a small kid in New Hampshire, I knew that I could do absolutely anything. And I was always told that. And I still believe you absolutely can. But we need to make sure that we're preserving all of this opportunity for my kids, for your kids, for all of our grandkids. And that's going to be a big theme on Trish Regan Intel, starting June 1st, by the way. How do we preserve economic opportunity for everyone in this country? I'm going to give you a Fox News high five. Oh, to mom to mom, welcome to the family here. Thank I can't you, Elizabeth. wait. June 2nd, you said. June 1st. No, June yeah. 1st. Trish Regan, everyone, welcome. Thanks. Trish Regan Intel, you're not going to want to miss that on Fox Business. Now, coming up, former Florida Governor Jeb Bush taking some tough questions, going one-on-one -on -one with her own Megyn Kelly last night. How did he do? If you want to see it. And Charles Krauthammer here in minutes to grade Jeb's performance for you. Plus, it's where America first fell in love with her. So, Grandpa, there's no way that I'm going to make it. Okay, right. yes? Yeah. yes. Yes and yes. Yes. Congratulations. Oh, I loved her then. I love her now. Former Idol contestant and country music star Kelly Pickler. Brightening things up here, walking into our studio live at Fox and Friends. Kelly Pickler. Uh, increasing violence in Mexico prompting cruise lines to cancel passenger pickups in dangerous areas. Royal Caribbean, Celebrity Cruises, and Disney Cruise Line all skipping ports of call in Puerto Vallarta as armed gangs are getting more violent, so they're not going to stop there. And a tech giant takeover, Verizon has just announced they're going to buy AOL and all of its digital properties for $4.4 billion. Once upon a time, it would have been worth about $100 billion dollars. Verizon says the goal is to boost its mobile platforms and advertising revenue as well. All right, 23 minutes out after the hour. It's the hit TV show that brought moments like this to your living room. Honey, your love. 
She pays, she pays. I'm wasted by the waste. Thank you. At last, my love has come along. Seasons American Idol is coming to an end. That's right, and it helped launch the career of country music star and season five contestant Kelly Pickler, who joins us live on the Kermit Good Catch. Morning. When you watch that, it's got to bring back such fond memories, and the, to does. know that now it's coming to a close, no. it's bittersweet. I was telling you right before, I was thinking there might maybe there'll be these idol rides and um, like, idol rides. Idol rides. Uh, ride. Bring it back. And then they're gonna be like, "Psych, we're not going anywhere." Uh, I love the judges, Hannah. We watch with the kids. I actually have them vote, even if we <laughs> they do their fake vote. I love anyways. that. But you know, I love the opportunity that it gives to somebody yeah. who's just singing somewhere you might not even know, like you. I mean, you have such a precious voice, and we would have never gotten to know you as quickly as we did on American Idol. So I'm, I'm so blessed to be a part of the show. Oh, absolutely! I'm so blessed to be a part of the show, and I mean, it changed my life. And that's what it does. You're right. It takes people that would have never in a million years had that opportunity. Opportunity. It, 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 it creates, it makes your dreams become a sure. reality. Mm. You know, so, it did mine. So now there's going to be one more season left. I imagine they're going to contact people who have broken out like you to come back for that one more time. I'd hope so. Right? I'd and love to. Did you see this coming? Um, you know, everything that, you know, starts comes to an end eventually. But I think that it could be the beginning of other shows. And well, as that closes out, a new show is going to start. It's called yeah. I Love Kelly Pickler. It's unrelated to Idol. It's a reality show. You're going to be the executive producer. You're going to invite a whole bunch of cameras into your house every day. Is this really We're coming to your house. With your husband. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With yeah. your husband. We, you know, we are all about having a good time and having fun. We want to make people laugh. We want to bring people joy. So... We're, we're gonna have fun with it. Are you yeah. nervous about everyone? See, I love the title because every time you, I say your your name, I say, "Oh, I just love Kelly Pickler." Oh. <laughs> well, I love you guys. It's perfectly titled, but is there anything you're worried about people seeing? You know, I think I was first introduced on a reality show, yeah. Idol, and then Dancing with the Stars, and and um, you know, I'm kind of used to all of that. I think you have to obviously set boundaries, and there's things oh. that need to remain private. Well, There's Elizabeth things that you can a, share that are fun. Elizabeth was on a reality show, but she had yeah. to eat, eat lizards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... Oh, so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so hungry, I ate a lizard. So, we might have what, and what are we going to see in your show? What is your life like? Describe a day in the life of Kelly Pickler now, Mary. I'm just hanging out with you guys here on the Kirby couch. And how far she's come from yeah. the days you were the, the waitress at Sonic, right? Uh, yes, yes, sir. I, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And now you're actually helping people keep their lungs healthy. Yes. And particularly women this month, Yeah, right? well, I, yes, what are you doing? Um, well, I know the last time I was here, we talked about um, lung force. My grandmother that raised me had um, was diagnosed with lung cancer, and then she passed away the very next day, so it was very, very sudden. There she is. And my sweet granny. That's the last picture we took together, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, it's great to be a part of something that matters. And, um, you know, Lung Force is an incredible movement. You can go to lungforce.org. You can get more information. There's a new video we just posted. It's the number one killer. Of women. It's the number one cancer killer for women, which I was shocked, and I was also shocked to to, for, to find out that you do not have to be a smoker to have you know lung Absolutely. cancer. If you have lungs, then you're at risk for lung cancer. So it's um it's pretty incredible. But okay. I am excited to be a part of something that, like well, I said, matters. If people go to our website, we'll link to your website as well. Thank you, Kelly. Absolutely. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Thanks for I love Kelly Pickle. I love you. <laughs> All right, Kelly, great to see you again. Thank Good luck with the show. Uh, meanwhile, two minutes before the bottom of the hour, straight ahead, we talk politics.